Hi there, my name is Anna Navin Young, and I'll be presenting my master's dissertation in applied psychology, positive and coaching psychology. The study is entitled Time Thieves, Enhancers, and Reflections Examining Experiences of Leisure Time and Technology Use Through Reflective Time Tracking. I want to start off with a little bit of background research that's informed this current study. So time use research has been conducted for over a century to explore patterns in the ways that individuals, communities, and nations spend their time. It's been used to track trends in hours spent on things like paid and unpaid labor, leisure time, and sleep, for example. This type of research often utilizes what's known as a time diary, which participants use to document how they spend a specified period of their time. Now, Categorizing time is a common way to look at patterns of time use in this type of research. Leisure time is a familiar category that, unlike categories such as work, is largely left to individuals to define and structure for themselves. This offers a really rich space to explore subjective valuing and experiencing of time. Further, leisure is often associated with higher levels of enjoyment, well-being, and satisfaction. So looking at this area of time might give us insight into how some of these factors are cultivated. Finally, another component of time use involves technology. Research has seen technology change the ways that we spend our time. Technology has become an integral part of many daily routines and habits. So taking a closer look at the role technology plays in our time may give us a better understanding of its influence on our experiences. Informed by this previous research in time use, technology, and leisure, the current study's main research questions were first, how do individuals experience leisure time and technology use? And second, in what ways can a reflective time journal exercise inform personal experiences of leisure time and technology use? So I want to go into a little bit of what this time journal exercise actually was and how it was informed by previous time diaries. To make a distinction between previous time use diaries, which focus mainly on quantitative methodologies, and the current study design, which is really using the time tracking exercise to explore participant subjective experiences, I chose to use the term time journal as opposed to the familiar time diary to really emphasize this distinction. The time journal created for this study is informed by the previous standards in time diary designs. Here you can see that there are three main columns. The first is to track the periods of time. The second is to track the main activity occurring in each period of time. And the third is to track other activities that are occurring simultaneously during each period. This time journal also expands from the typical time diary design to include a section there at the bottom, you can see the note section, um, that is used by participants to record any thoughts, feelings, or reflections that occur while they're tracking their time. So when participants were briefed, they were encouraged to use the time journal in ways that felt most beneficial for them, both in terms of how they filled it out, when they filled it out, and what they considered leisure time and thus recorded in the time journal. Data collection began after the time journal was designed. Eight participants in their 20s and 30s participated in this study. They were either full-time or part-time students and or employees, or had other commitments that helped to structure their time. First, participants were engaged in a semi-structured interview where we explored their definitions and experiences of leisure time and technology use. Next, participants engaged in a seven-day time journal exercise where they tracked their leisure time and any feelings or thoughts that came up as they were tracking. Finally, participants returned for a follow-up interview where we explored their experiences of keeping the time journal. I used inductive thematic analysis to construct four themes from this data, which I'll now present to you. The first theme is time tracking increasing time awareness. So the time journal impacted how participants reflected on their time use, how they noticed time habits and behaviors, and how they took accountability for how they used their time. The participants spoke about how the time journal brought awareness to activities that were previously taken for granted or previously unacknowledged, and how they were better able to recognize and appreciate these activities as part of their leisure time. As Andrea says here, quote, 
When you're a bit more conscious of how you're spending your time, it has the power to shift your whole day, shift your whole perspective. The next theme is multifaceted experiences of leisure. Here, the participants spoke about how different relationships, social environments, circumstances, and values all impacted how leisure time was defined, used, and experienced, and how sometimes across time, leisure time looked and was defined differently based on some of these different relationships, environments, and circumstances. We can see here from Lisa, who was a full-time student, that her role as student and her circumstances as a student were impacting the ways that she was experiencing and defining and thinking about her leisure time currently and for the future. She says, quote, My vision for after this course is to not do work on weekends. I miss a lot more nature walks and hiking, and that usually happens on the weekends. The next theme is technology and quality of leisure time. Here, participants are talking about how technology offers the most quality to their leisure by offering spaces of connection and communication. Technology provided more opportunities to multitask, seen as both positive and negative by the participants. Participants talked about how technology could enhance the quality of household chores, commutes, and exercise, for example. However, participants also spoke about how there were concerns about the inability to be fully present, how technology distracts, how they're afraid of lack of boundaries with with technology, and how sometimes technology can be a time thief. They described how they wanted to or how they currently use technology in ways that contribute to the quality of their time. Here we see Shay describe how she uses technology to improve the quality of her time. She says, quote, So I find it more beneficial than destructive because I use it to discover and explore and I limit the use of it when I am engaged in the activities themselves so that it doesn't distract me. The final theme is meaningful leisure time. Here, participants describe their leisure time as having purpose, whether that be evoking pleasure, decompressing, connecting with others, or using this time for personal growth and development. Ultimately, optimal leisure time involves some sense of meaning. Contrast and balance were important meaning-making factors. We see, for example, in Jamie's saying, quote, technology plays a huge part in my non-leisure time. That's why I love going out and going for a run and being away from it, you know, disengaging. So we see here that balancing social leisure with alone time or using personal freedom to choose leisure activities that contrast the pressures of work and studies are examples of how participants are making meaning out of their leisure time. Through time journaling, participants talked about the ways that they could use and explore intentional habits and boundaries to make their leisure time more meaningful. Overall, these themes explored patterns regarding awareness, context, quality, and meaning in participants' experiences of leisure time, technology use, and time journaling. This study took a novel qualitative approach to explore the time tracking experience through participant-focused outcomes. We see that leisure time and technology use are nuanced and complex experiences, and that the time journal exercise offered a way for participants to explore and reflect on their time in ways that brought about deeper awareness and, in some cases, insight into desired change. When we look at previous research, we see that nearly half of our behaviors occur as habits. We often miscalculate how we think we spend our time, and intentional or chosen activities determine about 40% of our happiness. So tracking time or bringing awareness to time can help to explore time habits and how they connect to factors such as quality and meaning and context, like the participants explained in their reflections in this study. Considering implications of this study, I think we can pose the question, what can we learn by becoming more aware of our time? This study really opens up opportunities for future research to look at how coaching psychologists and other helping professionals can use time awareness to support positive behavior changes in their clients. 
This study has also motivated and informed my current PhD research, which is investigating and developing evidence-based time awareness approaches that can help individuals to better understand their time habits and time values and how these influence factors such as health, happiness, and well-being. To end us off here today, I have a few slides of references, and I just want to say thank you very much for your time.